Hij tot hier van kan het stuk meer, hè? Ja, ik ze lopen. Eten, drinken. Ja, is goed, jongens. Well, Jermaine, I, I know every win is, is important and special, but yeah, I mean, you, you, you said you were looking for the submission. You, you get the submission. I mean, is, does that add something to it for you? Uh, I told you. <laughs> oh, I don't get sponsored by that. No, <laughs> no, I'm joking. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yeah, man, like I said, you know, in the cage, I felt a little bit sloppy. Um, I felt a little bit tight, but... No matter what, she gave me her neck in the second round. Uh, she went for the guillotine. I think she lost a lot of uh, air by doing that, and uh, it wasn't tight. So, uh, you know, I've learned some lessons, and uh, she gave me her neck. I told my coaches, if she gives me her neck, I'm going to put her to sleep. And I felt her going out. I told uh, Herzog, I mean, she's out, she's out. And uh, he felt, and she was out. You had a, a great round one, and then she kind of came back a little bit in round two. What, what was going through your head as she was kind of mounting that comeback? Was, was, was there adjustments you had to make? No, yeah, I, think, I think I was still a little bit too busy with, uh, with her takedown, you know, in the second round. Um, because I just didn't want to make it a boring fight, you know, so I wanted to stay light on the feet and don't get too tight, which made me a little bit tighter. But, uh, you know, it, at third round, we, I went in and my coach told me it's one on one. You know, you've got to put a little bit more pressure. And uh, she went for the takedown. And uh, we, I really practiced this because you have to shoot very low on my legs for me, to, you get, for you to get the takedown on me. And she did, and she gave me her neck. And uh, I could count, and she went to sleep. Well, I was going to say, it's interesting, because you said, you know, if it's there, I'm going to take it. And you're right, it was. But, I mean, in the, in the moment, was there any hesitation? Because obviously, if you don't get that, now you're on the bottom. And we know that that's, that's a tough spot for you sometimes. <laughs> I know, I know what you mean, but if you could see in the second round, I reversed her, you know, at the end of the round, and I, the moment my arm went around her neck, I dropped. She didn't drop me, I dropped, because I felt my arms in, I'm going to put her to sleep. Yeah. And I'm curious, because you're always such a, you know, positive, happy person. I'm not saying you're talking trash or anything, but you are being vocal, right? You're saying, hey, don't forget about me, I'm still around. So what kind of brought that in you, to, to say, like, hey, I'm going to speak up and say something? Like I said uh, earlier to you this week, um, I believe, honestly believe, uh, I have not uh, gotten the respect uh, I believe I deserved. I made history a couple times in my career, um, a lot of couple times, and I really did not get the respect. And um, I've seen in the past, you know, if you're being a jerk, uh, you get respect here in the UFC. I don't want to be a jerk. I want to say true to myself, but I believe I deserve a little bit more respect for all I have done in my career. And um, you know, there still has to come and do, some, do the things I do. And I'm 36 years old. I have a full-time job. Um, I train besides having a full-time job, being a police officer. You know, it's not easy. I'm getting older and it's not easy, but I still do it. So I deserve a little bit more credit for that. And last thing for me, you know, I know you want that title shot again. You want to face Amanda again. Uh, we, we don't know what's going to happen in the main event. You know how this business works. What, what do you think it's going to take? I mean, do you think one more win should get you there? Do you think you're there now? Like, what do you think it should take to get a fight with Amanda? Uh, honestly, I really don't know, and I could care less, to be honest. And don't get me wrong, you know. I just love to fight. And uh, whoever I have to face, I face. I just want to put up the entertaining fights. No boring fights. Give me an entertaining fight, even if it's a title shot or not. Just give me an, an entertaining fight. Because I'm here as an entertainer. You know, a belt is cool. You know how many belts I have? They get dust on it. I have to clean that, that shit, seriously. I, I don't like dust. So I always clean my house all day. I'm like, oh, I got to clean this. So all that belts put a lot of dust on them. It would be cool because I will be opening in January with my coach, I'll be opening my own gym uh, together with him. And uh, so that new belt, you know, that would fi fit fine in the new gym. We have a spot for it. Hey, Jermaine, you mentioned that you felt a bit slow and a bit tight. Do you think any of that could be to do with the time you're fighting or the lack of a crowd? Uh, no, it was just me. I just wanted to perform. I just wanted to knock her out. Like I said before, I wanted to make a statement. And sometimes when you want to knock somebody out that bad and want to make a statement, you get a little too tight because you want to put up that performance. But I believe, honestly believe, me winning by submission is even better than knockout, that old kickboxer. <laughs> did, uh, did you have to tell the referee she was unconscious? I don't know if I had to tell him, but I did told him. And he looked at me, and I told him twice she's out. And then he felt, because I felt her getting weak. You know, I've, I looked at her shoulder. Honestly, I've done this joke right now 
so many times in this camp since my last fight. Like I said, you have to shoot very low on my legs for, me, for you to take me down. She did, so my arms slide in very tight. So I'm like, it, it went very fast. I think if I would have come down from 10 to zero, she would have been out by five at least. And actually, it, it looked like that wasn't the only choke you, you nearly got. In the second round at the end, did you nearly get her in a Von Flew choke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I looked at the screen when I was pressing with my shoulder, and I saw her head getting red, and then I slipped to the side for an arm, uh, arm triangle, and then the, the bell went. Congrats on the win. Thank you so much. Have you ever put someone to sleep using that choke, or was this the first time? Ah, this was the first time, and the best one. <laughs> no first time, man. And then, uh, of course, Alistair Overy, another former Dutch kickboxing champion, he's had a lot of guillotine submissions. And uh, is, is, do you think that submission is just an overlooked uh, tool that when you see a lot of kickboxers come in, they get taken down and controlled? Do you, do you think this specific guillotine is a tool that they're overlooking in camp? Um, I don't know if the people are overlooking it. I, I, I believe. Uh, ground fighters overlook that I can put you to sleep. Uh, but now I put notice on. If you want to shoot on my legs, no problem, baby. Just be careful because I might put you to sleep. Out of curiosity, do you have a jujitsu belt? Or do you? Yes. Yeah, what, what, what level are you? <laughs> purple belt. Not bad for a purple belt. Not bad, huh? <laughs> I like that. Anything else? So can I have breakfast now? Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys.